Hello Sangha. This is day 15 um, and I wanted to come somewhere for the final practice on Fortaventura. Um, this is the beach that I found the other day and again it's completely empty, there's nobody on it. If I look to the right there's nobody there. I look all the way to the left. There were people there earlier but they're gone now. Um, I realise I'll be in silhouette but if you don't mind, I wanted the ocean in the background for our final practice. The ocean that reaches out and I'm sure it connects us back to Scotland. Even if we could set it off and sail here, we could eventually find our way back up the, the west coast of Europe and eventually get to Scotland. So, um, We're going to work on strength today and it's, it's really important that physically we're strong. It's really important that physically we have the ability to maintain our body to do what we need it to do, okay? So yoga is obviously helpful for flexibility, helpful for balance, but I really like to think it's useful for strength too. And the niyama that we relate to uh, today is tapas, which means the willpower and the determination and the steadity to stick to something, whether that's, it can be anything, it can be your, how you... Uh, your relationship with food by fasting or it can be trying to sleep better and really making a commitment to that um, or your practice or pranayama pranayama is supposed to be the greatest of the tapas which is working with your breath so we'll work on strength and um, like yesterday we'll start on all fours um, I'm hoping there's a helicopter it won't uh, come right overhead again but yeah I realize I'm in silhouette but that's okay so bring your hands forward and your knees back and shift your weight to the back of your mat, shift your weight forward, let your chest come down towards the floor, only as far as you feel comfortable, okay? Now we're going to do this a few times and each time you do it, can you do it a little bit slower? So you slowly go down and you slowly come back up. And you can even count down from 10 to one if you really want to do it really slow. Obviously not one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, not like that, okay. But it's important that we develop strength in our bodies. And then let your hands come back, your hips rest on your heels and take your hands up towards the sky, okay. Now we're going to bend our elbows, but our elbows are going wide. So they kind of come down level with our shoulders. They don't go in, okay? And then they're going up. When we were doing that a moment ago, our elbows were coming by our sides and coming out, okay? So this is the movement we want now. And we're going to do it from our knees and then we'll try it from down dog. So bring your hands forward. Bring your knees to a position where they feel supportive. Let your elbows go wide and push back up and try that a few more times okay good getting the strength in our shoulders and our arms and then lift your head and your chest walk your hands back towards your knees and let your hips come to rest on your heels again from here Let's see if we can do that from downward facing dog, right? So it's the same movement, but our knees are up. If you find that's going to be too much, then do it with your knees down. So your hands go forward, tuck underneath your toes, hips back toward your heels, and let your heels go back and down. And from here, it's trying to get your head between your hands and then push your shoulders back. Try and keep a certain amount of relaxation in your shoulders so it's not a tense movement. These are down dog push-ups and they, it's helpful to develop this pushing strength. In yoga we don't get a lot of pulling strength, but we also need the pushing strength anyway. So pulling, maybe you um, uh, use a, let your weight come forward, your knees come down. Maybe use an elastic, you know, for pulling, or if you've got a pull-up bar, just even pull yourself an inch or two. Okay, so we're going to try and mix those two things. The, you can do this with your knees down, you can do it with your knees up, okay? So bring your hands forward, 
tuck underneath your toes, hips back towards your heels. Send yourself into downward dog. Do the down dog push up, okay? And then bring your shoulders forward. Keep your hips a wee bit high, lower your chest down and come up. And try going between these two movements. So your chest stays in the line with your arms initially and then you come forward and your chest lowers down. Remember you can do this with your hands a little bit further forward and your knees on the floor so you let your head come down, come forward, let your chest come down. And don't do so many that you feel, un you feel tired, okay? And then take a moment and give your shoulders a roll. See how that feels for your shoulders today, okay? Bring your hands forward and walk the hands off to one side and see if you can bring your chest down and push up. And you feel like one arm is slightly working harder than the other arm. So you come down and you come up. You come down and you come up. And then walk to the other side and try that another side. Chest down and up. Chest down and up. Maybe three times is enough. Maybe once is enough. And then back to the center and try one or two here. And then let your hips come all the way back towards your heels again and see how that feels. Roll out your shoulders, okay? We're gonna try and build our back strength, okay? And our, the, the, this uh, posterior side of our body by bringing our whole body flat on the ground and stretching our arms out and lifting both arms and legs. And this is enough this shalabhasana posture is enough to feel like the whole back line of your body is working. And then take a moment, bring your hands underneath your forehead, shake off your heels, shake off your hips. Try that again. Both arms reach out, toes reach out, everything comes slightly higher. And then bring your hands underneath your forehead. Let your legs come down, shake off your heels, shake off your hips. So the next thing we're gonna try and do is that same posture, but roll it onto its side, right? So your arms go out, your legs go out. You roll onto your side, keep your arms up, your legs up, and then roll back down. And then try and roll to the other side. back to the center, and again, take a rest. Shake off your legs, shake off your hips, let your shoulders relax. Bring your head up, bring your hands back by your ribs, push the floor away, take your knees wide, touch your big toes together, sink your hips back towards your heels, your elbows towards the floor, and then your forehead towards the floor, taking slow breaths in and out here. Lift your head, lift your elbows, walk your hands back towards your knees and push your hands into the floor and transition to a squat. However way, however way, however you would like to do that, okay? Whatever way. And take your squat for a little movement from side to side. So placing your hands and come to one side. Placing your hands, come into the other side. Placing your hands, okay? And you can start to make it a little bit more of a cartwheel, a little slower, or you can just do a, a small jump, whatever you feel is helpful for you today. So let your elbows rest on your knees and your knees go from side to side. Okay. So obviously we want strength in our upper bodies, okay? And generally men have a little bit more strength in their upper bodies. Women have more mobility in their hips and other qualities that men, that men occasionally suffer from or don't have. So we just have slight differences in our bodies. But one thing that we all need is strength in our legs. So bring your feet together. Come into a squat. 
take your arms out in front, stretch your fingers so you've got a bit more balance. And then push into the floor so you can get a little bit higher. And come all the way up. Okay? And then slowly coming down. Again, we're not looking for too much momentum or too much support from gravity. We're trying to work with gravity to help us build the strength. So we're slowly coming up. And slowly coming down. Good. Last one. Slowly all the way up. Sweep your arms out wide, clasp your hands, relax, and just move in ways that feel good now. Big side bending movements, releasing your body from any tension, and then relax. And shake it off. Take your feet a bit wider, bend your knees, sink your hips, and come into horse stance from here. Sinking your hips a little bit lower, maybe drifting from side to side. Okay. Maybe letting your palms come to your heart and come to the middle and let your chest go forward and your shoulders soften. So horse stance, really feeling like your legs are working. We did this a few days ago. Okay. Take a moment, inhale, reach up with your arms, straighten your legs. Exhale, go wide, bend your knees and sink your hips. Try that a couple more times. Inhale long and reaching. Exhale wide and sinking down. Inhale long and reaching. Exhale wide and sinking down. Good. Take your hands on your thighs and move, again move from side to side. So we're going to make quite a strong movement. We did it the other day. But again, it's about developing strength and mobility in your legs. So bring your weight to one side. And then try that on the other side. Okay. Bring it over and sink down. So you've got a bend in this knee. Your heel is up, probably, if you're like me. And then switch that to the other side. If you can bring your palms together, bring your palms together and switch all the way over to the other side. Again, coming over, all the way to the other side. Okay. Come towards the center, send both feet a little bit wider, and do a wide leg downward facing dog. Push on the outside edge of each foot, and if you can do a down dog press up in this position is hopefully a little easier than when we're in down dog position. Maybe just a step up from having your knees on the ground. So do a few of them here. And then bring your hands underneath your shoulders. Push into your feet. Push into your hands. And squat in with your feet. Take your feet. Hip width apart again, take your arms out in front, and inhale all the way up again. And exhale, shake off. So we would be squatting several times per day if we were back a thousand years ago. Because every time we used, went to the bathroom, do you call it going to the bathroom a thousand years ago? Every time we needed to uh, pee or poo, okay. Okay, we would squat. Point your feet forward, bring your hands towards your heart, and let your heels come up and down. Just a few more movements for strengthening our body. Good, heels up and down. Good. And then gently release. And see if you can sit down without using your hands, or usual practice. Try it maybe some, try it not your habitual way. See if you can try it. The other way around, okay? And then bring your feet out towards the front of your space. Take your hands out level with the ground and slowly come down to lie on your back. And then hug your knees towards your chest. And this is something we did in the first or second day. 
Let your legs come up towards the sky. Spread out both arms and let your toes come out towards your fingers. Do this with your knees as bent as you need to, okay? Bring your toes out towards your fingers. Back towards the center. One more time, either side. And then hug your knees towards you. Roll out to one side, push into the floor, and come to a seated position that makes sense for you. Point your fingers towards your heart today. So this is Avahana Mudra, another mudra that my teachers like us to use or suggest that we use. Lengthen up through your spine, even if you're sitting against the wall or even if you're lying on the ground, just kind of relax your shoulders down, lengthen your pelvis away. And take slow, smooth breaths in, slow, smooth breaths out. And let your focus come to your heart. Feel like every time you inhale, your heart expands. Every time you exhale, your heart softens and gathers back to the center. So every inhale expands more. Every exhale gathering back to the center. And when you find your mind wander, bring it back to your heart and your breath and expansion of your heart. And really take your time, whether you're resting on your back, whether you're in a seated position, to connect to your heart and the stillness that lies within you. You can hear the sound of the waves, even let the sound of the waves be your focus, just the flow in. And the flow out. And if you want to connect your fingertips to the base of your palms, we'll finish with a, a 
a chant that relates to the sun and the qualities of the sun that my teachers taught us in Manchester in 2016. Yo deva savitas makam deo dharma de go charaha prerayet hasya yad bargaha tadvarenya mupasmahe Bring your thumbs up. Thank you, everybody. Um, I hope you've had a good practice today. I hope you've uh, benefited and, and felt free to do your own thing over the past two, two and a bit weeks. Um, or, you know, whenever you're doing this. It doesn't have to be in January. Um, yeah. I'll be recording the rest of the practices in Scotland. There's a helicopter coming again. Um, so I'm going to try and still do them outside. You know, I've really enjoyed doing them outside. I might be having this like slightly <laughs> Fuerteventura filtered uh, view that I'll be able to do it in Scotland and not be too cold. Um, otherwise, it might be in my lounge with the dog like last year, which was very beautiful too. Um, Okay, have a good day, have a good uh, sleep if you're on your way to bed, uh, stay strong, stay calm, thank you so much guys. <laughs>